Hey everybody, it's Dina Mallory from Bennington Museum, and today we're going to make some butter. I'd like to thank Stewart Shops for supporting our school transportation program. Right now we can't bring school buses to the museum, so we've decided to give Stewart's a shout out every time we bring you online educational programs. So a big thanks to Stewart's. I also have to give a shout out today to Mrs. Hogue from Granville Elementary School. She's a fourth grade teacher there. And the fourth graders from Granville, New York, were going to come to Bennington Museum this spring to participate in our crafts and trades program. Unfortunately, we had to cancel that trip because of everything that's going on. But Mrs. Hogue asked me if I wouldn't mind making a video of some of the activities that we do in that crafts and trades program. And one of my favorite parts of that program is making butter using the old fashioned butter churn. Well, I don't have an old fashioned butter churn here at my house and I'm guessing you probably don't either, but I'm gonna show you how you can make butter with a few simple things that you probably do have at home. So thanks Ms. Hoag for the recommendation and here we go. So to make butter, it's really pretty simple. You only need a couple of things. First, you need a cow. You don't have a cow? Oh, that's too bad. I don't have a cow either. But if I did have a cow, I would milk the cow and I would let the milk sit for a while. And as it was sitting, the heavy cream would rise to the top. And that's the stuff that I want. I would skim off the heavy cream and that's the stuff I would use to make my butter out of. Well, I don't have a cow, but I do have a Stewart's shop nearby. So um, we went down to Stewart's and we got some heavy cream. So this is the stuff you want, heavy cream, not half and half, not whipping cream, not plain old milk, but heavy cream. And it's best for it to be at room temperature for you to do this. So you need your heavy cream and you need a jar with a good tight fitting lid. Make sure your jar is clean because nobody wants dirty butter, right? Then you take your heavy cream and you open it up and you're going to pour some of it into your clean jar and you can see it just looks like milk maybe it's a little a little richer a little thicker than regular milk but it's just a liquid it smells like milk and we're going to put our lid on make sure we put it on there nice and tight and next up comes the churning part. Now, like I said, I don't have a butter churn here at home, but in the description um, of this program, I put some links so that you can see pictures of some of the butter churns that we have in the museum collection. So you can get an idea of what those look like. But we're really doing the same thing. When you're using a churn, you're using the plunger of the churn to churn up the butter, to agitate the butter. And another way to do that is just by shaking this jar. You have to shake it for a good long while. Another link that I put in the description explains the science of what's going on here a little bit. So everything's made up of molecules, right? Different kinds of molecules. And the heavy cream that we just put in there is also made up of molecules. Some of those molecules are the fatty molecules in the heavy cream. And as we're shaking it up here, those molecules get all agitated and the fatty molecules start to clump together. And finally, when they've all clumped together, we'll see a separation between the butter fat, which is what we call butter, and the butter milk, which will be a thin liquid. So this can take a while, depending on a couple of things, including how much cream you've put in your jar and the temperature of your cream. The reason for that is that warmer molecules move faster. So if your heavy cream is really cold, those molecules aren't moving as fast and they don't bump into each other quite as quickly as when it's room temperature. So the best idea is to make sure you keep your heavy cream out. Let it get room temperature before you start trying to make butter. So now we just shake. We shake, shake, shake. All right, let's stop shaking for a minute and take a peek at what we've got in here. Oh boy, it's not liquidy anymore. Now, let's stick my finger in there and get some. It's kind of like, it's starting to thicken up. Now it's like the consistency of maybe a milkshake or something. Mm, still tastes like milk. All right, let's get that lid back on there and we're gonna shake it some more. So already those fatty molecules are starting to stick together. Whew, 
helps if you have a partner to divvy up the shaking with. Oh, look, now it's, oh, my partner is arriving. Now it's really getting pretty thick. I can even hold it upside down and it won't come out. This is my resident fourth grader. He's going to do a little shaking for me because my arms are getting tired. I'm shorter than she is. <laughs> And as you're shaking it, at some point, you're going to feel something change. Instead of all of that cream being in there, all of a sudden, you're gonna have this glop of more solid stuff bouncing around in the liquid stuff. And that's how you know you've gotten to butter. <laughs> Thanks, partner. It's hard work, this butter making. Okay, I can tell that we're almost there. And if you notice, you're starting to be able to see through the glass again. That's because that butter, those butter fat molecules are really starting to clump up. And in just a minute, as I keep shaking it, it's a good workout too. I keep shaking it. Can't get to the gym, make some butter. Almost there. Looking pretty good. Just waiting to feel that ball of butter bouncing around in there. You can really feel it when it happens. There we go. You can almost feel the exact moment that it happens. All right. Can you hear the difference? Okay, I'm gonna go get a bowl to put this in so we can see what it looks like. If we really wanna make good butter, we're going to do what's called rinsing or washing the butter. Yeah. And we would take that blob of butter and add thing. some water to it and then squeeze as much of the liquid out as we could. Um, and the more liquid you get out of that butter, the longer it'll last before it starts to go bad. But um, just, because uh, we want to check it out. Why don't you go get a piece of bread out of the bread drawer there? And we're going to do this without rinsing our butter and without salting it, because you can buy unsalted butter in the, the store, and that's basically, it, it's, it is exactly what we've just made here. Or you can buy salted butter in the store which is what a lot of people like. In our family, we, we actually buy both because sometimes we use salted butter for cooking or eating, and then other times we use unsalted. So Jack, oh, look at that. Looks just like the butter you buy in the store. Do you need some more there? Yeah. Okay. And what Ooh. we'll do is we'll, we'll end up separating this butter from the buttermilk and squeezing as much of that liquid out as we can. And then we can save the rest of the butter in the fridge and use it on our toast tomorrow morning. All right, why don't you have a sample, see what it tastes like. Hold on. You get some too. Oh, thanks. He's going to share it with me. <laughs> All right, let's try it out, guys. Mmm. How is it? It's actually it tastes like real butter. It's surprising, kind of. It tastes like real butter? Mm -hmm. And that's surprising? It is yeah. real butter. It's, it's as real as it gets. The only but, difference between this butter and the butter you buy in the store is that um, this isn't in stick form. And do you know people back in the 1800s and early 1900s when they made their own butter, they used to use something called butter molds to shape their butter. And in the description of the video, I'm going to include some links to some really cool butter molds from our collection as well. Well, there you have it. It's really good. 
there's how you can make butter at home. So I hope you will try it. If you can get out there and get some heavy cream and let me know in the comments how it turned out. Thanks everyone. Keep learning.